Greetings, this is Jeff from Cantac Support, and today we're going to take a look at how to integrate a Neo panel to KT400 or KT1. Now, I'm not going to look at all the bullets right away because we're going to see them one by one, starting with the minimum requirements. Okay, so let's take a few moments to take a look at the minimum requirements to be able to achieve this integration. For KT400 uh, firmware 1.17, revision 1 of KT400, you need 1.23 or higher. And for the KT1, you need version 1.03 or higher. Now, Neo Alarm Panel firmware must be 1.10 or higher, and your TL280R integration module firmware must be at least 4.10 or higher. Okay, so now let's take a look at the connection between the panels. So we'll take a look from the right side. You can see the Neo panel that connects to the TL280R. And then the TL280R over Ethernet will communicate to the KT400. And then, of course, the KT400 communicates with the EntraPass software. Now you have to remember that you'll have to use a static IP address on the KT400 or the KT1. Okay, so next is the hardware connection to the TL280. So we will open up the cabinet. You can see the uh, panel at the top and the TL280 at the bottom. So we just connect the ethernet wire and then you can see the LED starts reacting as soon as we do so. All right, so now let's take a look at programming the Neo panel. So first step is we're going to click star 8 and then 5555, our installer code. And then we're going to go to subsection 382. And then we will select option 5, alternate communications. Now if we press 5, you see that we can toggle between yes and no. We'll want to make sure that yes is selected. and then programming the IP of the TL280. Now actually, we're programming the TL280, but it's the IP address of the KT400 that you will use. So we will go to subsection 851 and then 663. We'll want to make sure that number 3 and number 5 are activated, so you can toggle them by pressing the numbers. And then we will want to go to subsection 693. And that's where you will enter the IP address of the KT400 or the KT1. This is why you need a static IP address for the panel because it's hard coded in the Neo panel. All right, now, once the IP address is selected, we'll go to subsection 664. And we'll want to make sure that number three is active and now we're going to take a look at the next part which is going to be getting the integration values from the neo panel so once again star 8 and then our installer code 5555 then we're going to go to 851 and then subsection 651 and then you can scroll you'll want to write that number down and scroll to the right to see all 12 numbers. I want to write that down because you'll have to enter that in the enter pass later on. Then we're going to go to subsection 652. And once again, this time you have eight characters. You'll want to copy those and uh, make sure that you enter the same thing in enter pass. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create the integration in the enter pass software. So we'll want to go to Devices, Integrated Panel. We'll want to click the New button to create a new integration. Let's go ahead and call this Neo Integration. All right, so for connection type, we're going to select DSC Power Series Neo, Neo connected to a controller, serial or IP. In our case, it's going to be IP. And remember that the KT400 or KT1 must be using a static IP address for this. Then we go to the panel components. We can see our zones, our partitions, 
and our users, you'll want to configure this in Entropass beforehand and also the virtual zones which we will cover in another video. Now once that's done you click the configuration button. First thing you want to select is the con controller selection for pass through. So we're going to select our controller number one and then we have to enter the integration identification number which we got earlier from the Neo panel. So you want to go ahead and put in all 12 characters. And then we're going to go to the communication tab and we'll want to make sure to select TCP IP. And then the outgoing encryption key, which is by default there. And then master access code. And once you're done, you can go ahead and click OK and then save. When you try to save, it's going to ask you to select a default user. And that's the code that's going to be used by the Neo panel when it tries to arm and disarm. So we're going to select user 1. And as you can see, we don't need to save again. It's already been saved. Okay, so once the panel has been created, we'll want to go to the Operations Integrated Panel and see the different icons. As you can see, while it's not communicating, you've got some red X's. Once you start communicating with the panel, you'll get an event in the Entropass, Panel Communication Restore. And you can see all the icons are in blue, meaning they are uploading. Once the upload is complete, you will see another event in Entropass, Component Upload Completed. And then you'll see the correct icons for the different zones and partitions. Next, we'll want to verify the users in Entropass for the Neo panel. To do that, we'll want to go to Devices, Integrated Component. We can select to see only users. This will make it easier. And we can go ahead and select User 1. Go to the Configuration, and you can see that it already uploaded the information about the user. If we check User 2, his code is already in there too. And if we check User 3, his code is also in there. So now we're going to take a look at arming and disarming from the operations menu. So you want to go to operation, integrate a panel, and then you want to right click on your partition and select partition arm away. As you can see, the Neo panel goes into exit delay. Once the system is completely armed, you can disarm it by right clicking on the partition and selecting partition Disarm with code. Alright, so our next step is going to configure a door to arm and disarm from the reader. So to do that, we're going to go to Devices Door, and then we're going to select the door that we want to arm or disarm from. Let's go ahead and select Door 1. We're going to check the checkbox, Enable Multi-Swipe. This gives us the multi-swipe tab. Now, multi-swipe schedule, we'll want to select always valid. And the double swipe action we will want to select is request to arm granted alarm interface. We can check the checkbox to relock on access. This will relock the door when we double swipe. Then we would go to the options and alarm system tab and external alarm system options button. Go to the disarming request tab and select an access level to be able to disarm. If I select the access level group all access levels, anyone who has access to the door would be able to disarm. Then we want to go to the partitions tab and select a partition that will want to arm or disarm. In this case, we're going to select partition number one. And finally, let's take a look at the sequence of events when arming or disarming the system from a door. First of all, I'm going to use a double swipe to arm the system. And as you can see from the picture in picture, here's a list of events that you should see when you are arming with a double swipe and then disarming with a single swipe and opening the door. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.